you are what you eat. How many times have we heard that phrase, you are what you eat? But honestly, in today's video, you're gonna really want to pay attention because some of the foods that you're eating could really have an impact on your health. I'm a certified nurse midwife and this channel is intended to be your one-stop shop for all things women's health, nursing, and minimalism. I've added minimalism to the list. <laughs> In today's video, you guys, we're going to be talking about hirsutism, which is a medical term for facial hair. I can't tell you how many times women come to see me in the clinic with complaints of unwanted facial hair and seeking treatment options in order to get rid of it, right? What we're going to talk about in this video is what is hirsutism, what are some underlying causes, what are common treatments, and discuss alternative treatments. Again, hirsutism is facial hair and it presents usually in the mustache area, on the chin, the jawline, even the sideburns, the neck, and the chest. And so typically the underlying cause of facial hair in women is due to a hormonal imbalance. These women tend to have higher levels of a hormone, a male hormone called testosterone. So it's just in circulating in the woman's body in higher levels. And so some common methods of treatment um, to, to treat women with hirsutism is typically some birth control pills. And typically it's going to be a birth control pill that's combined um, with estrogen and progesterone, okay? Because like I said, women with hirsutism usually have an elevated level of testosterone. And so when you introduce a combined birth control pill, it's gonna have estrogen and progesterone. And it's that estrogen component that helps to kind of balance out and level that testosterone and hopefully slow down the progression of facial hair or stop it altogether. Now, there are reasons that in my practice, I don't end up prescribing birth control to women who have unwanted facial hair, but they are seeking treatment. So let's talk about some of those reasons. Number one being, maybe there's a contraindication. So what that means is maybe this woman has an underlying health condition that doesn't allow her to be a good candidate to receive birth control that contains estrogen. So someone who might have high blood pressure or suffer from migraines wouldn't be a candidate for birth control that has estrogen. Another is maybe this woman has previously used birth control containing estrogen and they didn't have a good experience. Maybe they experienced depression or unwanted weight gain and other things and so they never really wanted to go back to the birth control pills that have estrogen. Um, another reason could be that they're already on birth control. So for example, a woman could already have the IUD in place so it really kind of defeats the purpose to have an IUD in place and then introduce uh, birth control containing estrogen. It's just a lot of hormones, right? And then lastly, maybe that woman is looking to get pregnant. She's looking to conceive. So of course you wouldn't want to be on birth control pills if that's what your goal is, right? So here's where I want to talk about alternative treatments, okay? And this is why I say that food is medicine i know i know most people come to me or most people go to their doctors and they just want a prescription just write me a prescription so i can go to the pharmacy take a pill and get rid of my problem and i wish it were that easy but unfortunately it's not so i always want to bring to the table alternative options so that women can make informed decisions whether you decide you want to go with these alternative options is completely up to you but at least you're coming from a space where you've been informed right and in this case with unwanted facial hair in women there can be a direct correlation between what you're eating and the facial hair that you're seeing let's talk about how the food industry it's no secret so i'm not throwing anybody under the bus here it's no secret that when it comes to animal farming animals are introduced to hormones, whether it be estrogen or testosterone, or usually it's a combination of the two. So a lot of our meat products come from animals who have consumed or have been given hormones, okay? So when you, eat an animal product, you have to keep in mind that your body is consuming hormones. 
So with that thought in mind, let's talk about the three foods that I think if you were to eliminate, you would see an improvement in your facial hair. So number one, let's go back to the animals, right? Let's go directly to the source. That's gonna be the animals. So when you eat meat, because that hormone has been ingested and in the bloodstream of that animal, it now becomes part of their body, be part of their flesh. So when you have a burger and you have your bacon that we love and you have chicken, whether it's grilled or the, cooked in the most healthy way or if it's a grass fed, all these things, that animal still was introduced to hormones. And so if you eliminate meat, you're eliminating the possibility that the hormones that are coming from me are having an impact on your hormonal balance, right? So number one is eliminating meat. Number two, don't hate me for it, but it's going to be eggs. Eggs, yes, I said it. I know we love our omelets. I know we love our egg whites. I know we love eggs. We're a society who loves eggs. But like I said, whatever comes from that animal the byproduct of that animal is also going to contain those hormones so absolutely eggs still might have the hormones that were introduced to that animal to that chicken so eggs are going to contain testosterone in some level and then lastly it's going to be dairy <laughs> And y'all, I get it, I so get it. I'm like, I've been a big cheese person in the past. Like, I used to love cheese, I still do, I just don't eat it. But cheese, you guys, so, or, or any dairy product. So, I'm talking about yogurt, cow's milk, goat's milk, cheese. All of that is a byproduct of the cow, or in some cases, the goat, which was introduced to hormones, and then those hormones are passed to the byproducts of these other foods that we like to consume. So, just a quick recap. Meat, eggs, and dairy are all foods that could be contributing to your unwanted facial hair. So, this is where I say you have the information, do with it what you will. But I certainly challenge you or recommend that you eliminate these three foods from your diet for the next three to six months and see. See how your facial hair does. See if it stops growing altogether. See if it grows back thinner. See if there's just a reduction in the overall hair. It's definitely worth trying if you feel like you are not somebody who wants to do birth control pills or maybe you've done it already and you haven't seen much improvement. This is definitely an option that's available to you. So, so hopefully you guys found this video and this information helpful. Again, I think it's so important that women be informed and then they make their decisions from an informed place on their health. That's the best we can do as clinicians. And I wanted to bring this video because I know that it's not very common knowledge and it's not something women would automatically know how to do. And I know that women who suffer from facial hair, unwanted facial hair, it can have a huge impact on your confidence. You know what I mean? It have a huge impact on your confidence and your 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 femininity or feeling like, you know, a woman. And so that's why I thought it was super important to bring this topic to you guys. And I'm wishing you guys all the best in your journey. If you found this information helpful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so that YouTube knows that you like the video and it shares it with as many women as possible. And so until my next video, you guys, I will talk to you soon. Bye.